fingernails. Okay, so the anatomy of the nail. We will look at the individual parts, name the individual parts, talk about what the nail is, what it's for, and where it grows from. All that fun stuff, all right? Nails. First of all, then, what are they for? We have them on our fingers and we have them on our toes. Well, um, they are like claws, like little claws. And in fact, you'll see that the name that we use for some of the parts comes from the Greek word for little nail. Uh, no, little claw, rather. And um, they form a very firm back to the tip of the finger. So in terms of the fingers, they increase dexterity and sensitivity because they stop the otherwise potentially fleshy, skinny bit of the tip of the finger from moving around too much. So all these sens sensors, all these receptors here, stay in place as you're touching things and picking up things. So they increase the dexterity. Also, um, they're good for scratching. Uh, they have a protective function at the tip of the digits, which, as you may know, tend to get into harm's way uh, fairly regularly. Um, and they give a uh, fine precision grip as well in that, you know, you can pick a pin up from the floor, like a metal pin, you can pick a splinter out. So you, you can actually pick very small things up between your nails, which you couldn't do if you didn't have nails. Those are the functions of nails. The nail that we can see, the thing that we would call the nail, is known as the nail plate or the nail body. It has a free edge distally and it's translucent and it's made of keratin so it's rather similar to the outermost layer of skin in that the cells here have become full of keratin and given us a they've made us waterproof pretty much so the keratin which is a fibrous protein a very good structural protein has been formed into the shape of the nail um, and it's hard and it's structural, and it's insoluble, and it's waterproof. The nail, the nail plate. Now, if we look at the nail plate, you can see a half moon shape at the proximal end. So if the nail plate itself is translucent, at the proximal end, we can see a white half moon shape. And this is different to the rest of the nail. So the rest of the nail underneath it is fairly pink. And that's because the nail plate is really well anchored to the nail bed. So the nail bed is, it's epithelium, like the skin. The nail bed is the epithelium deep to the translucent nail plate. And it's really well anchored, which stops the nail from moving around. And in that nail bed, um, there are lots of capillaries. So it has a really good blood supply. So we see through the translucent nail plate to the pink nail bed. And if we squeeze the nail bed, you can see that it goes white. Or if you flex the nail, which has the same effect of squashing the capillaries in the nail bed, it goes white because the blood is pushed out of the tissue there. And if you release it, you can see it return to pink. That is quite a handy, not 100% reliable, but quite a hand handy um, diagnostic indicator of peripheral blood flow. You get used to seeing how that pink returns, how the, the blood returns to the capillaries of the nail bed. And if we see some bluing there or some slowing of that, then we think that, ooh, the blood supply to the peripheries is not good right now. So that's the nail bed deep to the nail plate. There's more to the nail bed. The nail matrix, which we'll talk about more in a moment, contribute, the nail matrix is making new nail. And the nail matrix is partly within the nail bed. So partly the nail is being made from that nail matrix in the nail bed. And because the nail is tightly adherent to the nail bed, if the nail bed is disrupted, the shape of the nail will also be disrupted. All right, so if we go a little bit proximally, go back to this moon-shaped thing here. The lunula is the name for that curved lunula, like a little moon, that curved crescent of white 
uh, at the proximal end of the nail. And this is the leading edge of the germinal matrix, the bit that's making new nail. And so that's why it's a different color, right? But we, um, where the lunula meets the skin, we have the eponychium um, or the cuticle. This is a seal between the skin and the nail that's appearing, progressing, growing from deep to the skin. So we have a waterproof seal here between the skin and the nail. Eponychium. Onychium, onychia, comes from the Greek word for little claw, because we've got like little claws, um, which I think then got pulled into modern Latin and got pulled into other things, but from what I've read, the, the, the Greek is the origin of this word. So things of the nail get called onychium, onychia. Uh, onyx is associated with this somehow. Anyway, onychium. So the eponychium is the skin upon, epi upon. This is the leading edge of skin upon the nail, eponychium. Okay, so the nail then, it actually continues proximally deep to the skin for some millimetres. And that is the nail root. So the nail root is a continuation of the nail deep to the skin. And in there largely is the germinal matrix where new, male, new nail is being made from. So there's kind of like a little sinus, a little space that the nail pushes back into and that's the nail root. The germinal matrix though is a bit more than that. As I said, the, the lunula, the, the little moon, is also part of the, the matrix. So we have a germinal matrix and a sterile matrix. Now the germinal matrix, this is where we have a collection of progenitor cell, cells from which new nail can be made. And the nail is made in a similar process to how the skin replaces itself in that the nail is actually made up from rows upon rows upon rows of keratinocytes. And what's happening here then is that the progenitor cells through mitosis, cell division are producing new cells, like the cells in the skin, they fill themselves with keratin uh, up to the point where they, they lose their nuclei, lose all their cell organelles, enter um, programmed cell death, and then you have a, a nice line, a nice new bit of nail, right? A new bit of hard keratin. So it's a bit different to skin in that we're producing a hard keratin nail, whereas skin is kind of a, almost a lightly keratinized waterproofish outermost layer of the epidermis. But that's the process. So we have progenitor cells in here producing new cells that form the keratin layers. Boom, 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 boom. So that forms the shape and the length of the nail. The nail matrix is producing about 90% of the new nail. And the sterile matrix, which is actually within the nail bed, is producing about 10% of the new nail and probably largely contributes to the, the thickness of the nail. So the germinal matrix is in the proximal nail at this end, which, which you know because you know the nail grows out from there. How fast do your nails grow? Fingernails grow at about half a millimetre a week, so two to three millimetres a month. Uh, fingernails grow more quickly than toenails. And of course, this is an experiment that you can do easily on yourself. Um, a couple more, couple more structural bits. Uh, we have the hyponychium. So where the, the free edge of the nail distally meets the skin, where those two are stuck, where the nail is stuck down, where, so where the nail meets the skin at the distal end, that is the hyponychium, hypo below, nychium, little claw, so hyponychium. And then where the nail meets the skin on either side, we have the perionychium, so peri beside, little claw. So the onychium words largely refer to where the skin meets the nail. And that's it, that's the anatomy of the nail. One final fun fact, um, if we have skin deep to the nail plate forming the nail bed, 
and that has a layer of dermis, because skin is made up of epidermis and dermis. Uh, the dermis is tightly adherent to the periosteum of the bone. So periosteum is the connective tissue covering the bone, which is tightly stuck to the bone. The dermis is tightly stuck to the periosteum of the distal phalanx. The nail plate is tightly stuck to the nail bed, which is tightly stuck to all those other things. And that's why your nail is fixed in place and doesn't move around very easily because essentially it's fixed to the bone through all those different layers. Cool, structure, anatomy, good, huh? That's it, that is the anatomy of the nail and it applies to fingers and toes. See you next week.